Radical Toys, welcome back to another live stream. We've got a, another good one for you guys tonight. We've got Masters of the Universe Origins, and we've got our rock on that uh, I've been patiently been waiting forever for from Mattel Creations, and it finally came. So we're going to be doing our rock on. Uh, before we do that, though, let's just see who decided to drop into the chat here to kind of hang out with us and see what's going on. Starting from the top here, we've got Master Versal Toy Hunter, so good to see you, good sir. Uh, yeah, hit rock bottom there for sure. Uh, we got Toy Mamas in the house, she'll be taking care of the Rad Blast in tonight. We've got uh, Mana Classic Toy Shop, Mike is in the house, good to see Mike. Uh, let's see here, what is Eldor saying? Oops. My chat just appeared on me for some reason, but that's all right. I'll get it back. Here we go. Oh, this phone is very touchy tonight. Very touchy. Uh, where was I here? I was somewhere around here. Oh, see, I got my X-Men 97 Jean Grey in the mail today, along with World Peacekeepers Army Jeep, Sergeant Slaughter. Or, that Sergeant Slaughter can use the Delta 17. 118th G.I. Joe is cool. Yeah, I got the Jean Grey. She's really neat. She's, she's great. For X-Men 97, Jean Grey is really cool. I was very happy with both head sculpts. Right now, I got mine sporting with the um, ponytail head sculpt. It's really nice. Uh, let's see. Oh, you missed it on Cyclops, eh? Yeah, he sold out here too, but I, I managed to score one. I grabbed one before he did. Uh, we got El Tendo's channel. Hey, good to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you, brother. How you been? Thank you for joining in. Uh, even in Radical Toys, doing some rock on and rolling tonight. Absolutely. So we got Radical Mom is in the house. We've got, uh, let's see, everyone's saying hello back and forth. we got Hyperdelic in the house. People are starting to come in now. It's good to see you, Hyperdelic. we got Jeff, all music fan. Good to see you. Good old Moto fans. we got Jesse Grieve is in the house. That's really cool. Uh, he's asking how much the Rock On fee figure was. I think he was uh, $41.00. Uh, that's after the shipping for Mattel Creations here in Canada. So that's how much he came to. It was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, let's see. And yeah, so okay, I think that covers just about everybody for the moment. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be taking a look at Rock On. So I had ordered this guy back when he dropped. And I had to wait uh, quite a while to get them. I remember waiting a little bit longer than the average person had to wait. So basically, uh, I think it was at least, what, a month after all the States people got there. So I, I waited a while. Might have even been longer. I, I can't remember. He has been uh, he was in the mail a couple weeks ago, I think, now. So that's pretty cool, though. So there he is. Uh, we're going to be checking him out. Oh, i got to turn the light on. I'm always forgetting to turn that darn light on. There we go. So we got the extra light going now. I'm always forgetting to turn that sucker on. It's because I don't want to drain the battery of it before I go live. That's why I always forget. But anyway, it's on now. We're good to good to rock and roll. So he should be pretty good. He should be pretty interesting to see uh, once we get him out of his package. Uh, let's see. Uh, before we get started, though... Uh, don't forget Friday, guys. We're going to be doing, uh, let's see, Masters of the WWE. So we're going back to some more Masters of the Universe with the WWE stuff. I got those cool classic accessories. Uh, we're going to be doing Ricky the Dragon Steamboat this Friday. So definitely check that out. Usual time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So the usual Friday night hangout. And uh, we're also just going to kind of hang out and talk about whatever like we always do. So nothing's changed there. And that's kind of what's going on. Now, tomorrow, uh, I would like to finish the Ghostbusters video game live stream. So I'd like to I'd like to do that tomorrow, probably. That's the plan. Uh, unless something big announcement comes up that I don't know about and I have to go live for it. But that's the plan anyway. I don't think there's going to be anything going on tomorrow. So we're going to do that tomorrow. Uh, and try to finish that game off. I think we got like a stage or two left. So we'll be doing that. Probably maybe 6 p.m. Eastern time, so somewhere's around that time. 
I'll figure it out anyway, but that's kind of what's going on for the rest of this week. Oh, and Sunday, before I forget, uh, we're going to be doing this game on Sunday because Mike had a great idea for us. And we've been talking about wrestling, and I was like, man, and he's like, he's, he's showing me all the wrestling games he had. And I'm like, damn, there's an idea. Why don't I pick up a video game and we'll do some live streaming. So I picked up WWE 2K14, so Blast from the Past. I've never played this until yesterday. So yesterday was the first day I actually got to play this. And I got to play it today as well. And it's a pretty cool game. Pretty neat. I like it. Uh, I was starting to do the Legends of Wrestling. That's what I unlocked. That's what I started with. And there's the cue of the dog barking at the door. Very loud. Very distracting. But it is what it is. So that's kind of what's going on. That's what I want to do on Sunday. But we're not going to just do the video game. We're going to do some uh, promos. I want to do some wrestling promos, and I want to do some of them Macho Man, Randy Savage, um, Slim Jim skits at the end of the video. So that would be kind of fun. And I'm a big Macho Man fan, so he's my favorite wrestler. Anyway, that's kind of what's going on. If you guys like wrestling, uh, stay tuned for that stuff for sure. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get to this rock on, shall we? That's what you guys are here for, so let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so starting from the top here, we've got Masters of the Universe, new for 24, Rock On, so spelled R-O-K-K-O-N, Young Heroic Comic Warrior. We've got some nice artwork that goes all the way here. You can kind of see the comet coming down, and then he's starting to transform. Basically two steps. He's in a rock, and then he goes to the partial robot, or whatever you want to call him. I know the rock people, but is he really a robot? Not really sure. I don't know if you if you would call him like a humanoid comet. I, I don't want to say robot, maybe a humanoid humanoid comet then, or humanoid rocket or something like that. Uh, modern Pose and Retro Play. Invincible Meteor into Mighty Warrior, it says. You can see him in there. He's got a nice mini-comic, so we're going to get to check out the mini-comic. Well, once again, it's been a moment since we got to check out some mini-comics. Uh, and on the back side, we've got Rock Ons. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't put Stone Dyer on there as a tease. I'm really surprised they didn't do that. Uh, we got Hordak and Leech, and of course, uh, Modulock. We haven't had Modulock in the line yet, so hopefully he'll be coming soon. So, some pretty interesting artwork. It's a little different artwork from what we're used to seeing, uh, especially the mini comic, and you guys will see that in a minute. Uh, let me see if I actually have... The other mini comics handy to me. I do. Okay, so I kind of wanted to do a little bit of. Uh, usually we do like comparison of the character, and we're gonna do that too because I do have the vintage Rock on and Stone Dark, so we're gonna be checking those out as well. But I also want to do a comparison to the artwork of the mini comic because the mini comic in this one is exceptionally different. Uh, very, very strange looking. And I wanted to do a comparison with uh, maybe just a generic comic book that we got in the Origins line from the past, right? So I got all these comic books here. I mean, I've got a big pile of them. They're all kinds of them. This is only a quarter of what I got. Uh, let's just pick a random one. Maybe something like... Uh, maybe this one, like Dragon Blaster Skeletor. That would probably be a good comparison once we get this open. And set these aside here. Okay, let's get him out. And this is going to be an easy one because uh, they're doing that oh-so-nice, beautiful slip cover. So you can just, boom, slide the card off and it's done. No cutting it up and no wrecking the art card in case you want to keep it which is a genius idea. Uh, hopefully they continue doing that moving forward with creations. I know in retail they can't do it because of theft and things like that, but for Mattel Creations, ordering it online, yeah, absolutely. I, I can't see why they wouldn't, they would stop doing this. This is a great idea. I love it. And then you can just go ahead and cut these little strings. Look at that, it just pops straight out. Boom, it's done. It takes two seconds. Just love it. Uh, let me see. I need something to cut those strings with, and I can't find, I still can't find my cut knife, or my craft knife. I don't know what happened to it. It just disappeared, and now I can't seem to find my scissors. Where did they go? 
see if I can find them here. Oh, there we go. I got the scissors. At least I got those. I don't want to lose the scissors, then we're in real trouble. So we'll go ahead and cut these strings. One, two, and I think that's it. Oh, one at the head maybe. And there he is. How simple that was. That was so easy to pull that out. It's got one accessory. We'll check that out in a minute. Get all these little stringy things kind of hanging around. And we got this blister. I guess we're going to, we can just keep this because we're going to keep the card art, right? So might as well just put it all back together. Come see, come saw, just like that. Boom. Bada boom. That's freaking awesome. I'll have to put that out of the way. I don't want to cover the logo. And yeah, we're good to go here. Let's uh, let's check out the mini comic first before we do anything else. I want to look at this thing. And it even comes in a little plastic, a little plastic bag either. Keeps your mini comic protected, which I think is another smart idea. That way you don't have to worry about the glue residue or any of that crap that you know we used to get in some of the older ones. Sometimes you get a mini comic and it'll be glued to the blister package because of the way they packaged it and your mini comic ends up getting destroyed okay so this one says the spear of eternity and as you can see look at the weird art on the front of it it looks so strange to me look at the faces it looks really i don't know how to explain this uh it's like um i don't know the best way i can describe it is like you know you guys remember that character gumby He's a green little character, and that's what this kind of reminds me of, like a Gumby look or some sort of claymation type of look. And if you compare it up to, like, say, Dragon Blaster Skeletor's comic book, you can see the artwork is very different. Maybe I can compare it with a different one. Here's a good one. Here's a good one. You can see Jitsu here. You can see the art style is exceptionally different. So, really strange artwork for this one. And it's the same on the inside, too. Very weird. I don't know why they ended up going with that style with it. But they did. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to read this mini-comic. Let's check this out, because you know me, I like to read these comic books. It's part of the fun. Uh, let's see, it says, High above the Aetherian sky, something sinister approaches. Uh, goddess says man-at-arms. Shoom, we could see the point dread coming down. Or talon fighter, I should say. Uh, wasting uh, no time, the talon fighter takes flight into its destination, Spike Heart. And there we go, we got Stonedar, Rockon, and Granita. They came to warn the comet people. They were all too aware of the approaching evil. Long ago, in their homeworld of Galleon, or Gallon? Geolon? Uh, Galleon? Yeah, I can't even say that word. You guys see that? Geolon. Geolon, is that it? Their people knew only peace and tranquility. So you can see Stonedar there. Uh, until the comic of Scoria, a uh, living volcanic mountain who made an ultramatum. Ultramatum? Bow to his will or be destroyed. They fought and won, though it was a priac victory. Who is that guy? That's a new interesting guy. Is that just a comet warrior? I want this guy. I want that guy. That'd be a cool guy in the line. Cosmic warrior. I could see them. I mean, I can see them reusing these toolings. I mean, we, you got Rock on and Stone Dyer are going to be two separate toolings, right? So I can imagine them reusing those tools to bring some cosmic warriors. So that would be a smart idea. Uh, let's see. Scoria was exiled in off world, however, the volcanic nemesis had other plans. Uh, it says Swearing vengeance to the home world, he split himself in twain, creating his twin brother, Obstian. It's kind of interesting. We've got the destruction of their world. Sun exiled the comet people to Etheria. So, to uh, Shira's planet, right? 
Although his roots and the twin were ripped away, Scorio remained patiently waiting in deep space to take vengeance. Now his wrath approaches at 85,000 miles an hour. It's pretty fast. And there's the crew. So yeah, that must be a cosmic warrior in the back. Uh, Gallons. I'm just going to call it Gallons because I can't pronounce it right. The evil that destroyed our world uh, tyrannizes, tyrannizes us again. I call on all of us to unite against the scourge of Scoria once and for all. And in the reastounding moment of unity, all Gallons put their lives on the line in order to vanquish evil. Though space is silent, souls are not. And yeah, that's kind of cool. And there's all the cosmic comets. <laughs> Look at that, that's so cool. And let's see, so great was Scoria's destruction. It lit on up, up the skies both Etheria and Eternia. Oh, there's the Crystal Castle. That's a cool nod. Good old Shira, and there they are. Man, that art style is so freaking weird. Let's see, returning to Spike Heart, the Galleons celebrate their victory together. They defeated a great evil that will haunt them no more. That's cool. And that's your mini comic. So we're going to put that back in the sleeve. Take care of that. It'll be the one that's known for Stranger at Work. Now, I wonder if they'll do the same type of style with Stonedar. And I'm praying, I'm really hoping that Granita comes to the line. Because, um, you know, we haven't seen her since, what, the Classics era? So, that would be kind of neat if they brought her around. I'm hoping, they, I'm hoping they will. I'm going to put these away just because it's bugging me. These uh, mini-comics here. And we'll add this one to the batch, I suppose. We'll add that to the pa to the pile. And then we'll just put them away. I'm very neat uh, about my work. It's one of the traits that I have. Very particular, I should say. I don't know about neat, but I'm sure it's heck particular. Put those over there. All right, we'll see what you guys are saying for a minute, and then we'll go ahead, because it's going to be uh, doing some comparison with some of this retro stuff. See what we got going on here. So we got 13 people are in the chat now. Let's uh, let's see who we got going on here. Uh, let's see. Trying to figure out where I left off. Okay, here we go. So we left right around where Jeff was saying he looks better in the package than loose. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, I, I know what you guys are going to be talking about here. But we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> uh, let's see. Eldor says, yes, I just had the groups rock on shipping pay there today at U Shop USA. Cool. So you'll be getting yours soon then. Ha <laughs> ha. He does not have a sweet gonkadonk. Yeah, I know. Ah, uh, that is such a strange word to me. Gonk, gonkadonk. Friday night hangout fun. Oh, there's so Eldor's dropping in some links, guys. So for you guys who missed uh, missed what I said earlier, we've got we're gonna be doing Masters of the WWE. Ricky, uh, the Dragon Steamboat. He's Friday, and then we're gonna do some WWE 2K14 on Sunday. And we're going to finish the Ghostbusters video game tomorrow. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe, guys. And if you guys are interested in Patreon, we've got Patreon. Or if you're interested in doing some Super Chats, uh, feel free to do so. Because all proceeds go to equipment upgrades. Uh, let's see. Where were we? Uh, Jesse says, if you review one of the Moto WWEs, I'm going to get Scareglow Undertaker. Cool. I would like to get that one. I don't have that one. I am a sucker for glow in the dark, so it'd be nice to be able to get a hold of that one sometime. Uh, let's see. Eldor says, yes, it was when Mattel had no shipped outside of the USA, so I had to get the rock on ship to freight forwarders. Yes, that's right. That's right, too. I was a pain in the ears. It really was. I was lucky enough to get one. I was able to get this guy. 
Yeah, the mini comics they they build up. I I don't want to throw them out though. I just you know part of history and part of the line. So you know I want to keep the mini comics. I wish all the figures were packaged like that. I agree because the first time I seen, first time I seen this packaging, uh, was when I discovered the uh, Bucky O'Hare action figures, and I think it was Boss Studio that made those figures. And it was the first time I've ever seen it, and when I, and it, it made my jaw drop, and it was like, I'm like, oh my lord, why didn't I think of that? What a genius idea. I'm like, why doesn't Mattel do that? And then I started seeing Mattel do it, like, you know, shortly afterwards, I started seeing them do it. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. Ah, uh, let's see... I wish all the figures packaged. Yeah, so easy. So easy to get them out. Yeah, it, it does make it easier for unboxing. It, it really does. It makes things go really sweet. I don't got to worry about cutting myself with a knife, even though I can't find it. Or, you know, screwing up with my scissors. Uh, let's see. Podcast from the Pit. Thank you for dropping in. Just wanted to drop in and say, uh, have a great stream. I'll catch the replay at work tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for dropping in and saying hello. Appreciate it. Uh, tonight's super chat goal, $4 to get Adam a new box cutter of power. <laughs> They're actually, uh, uh, I, I, you stand corrected. They're actually, um, they're actually, I think they're $9.99 here in Canada. So they're, they're a little more pricey here in Canada. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they're, uh, you can get them at the craft shop here just over at Michael's here. And I believe they're nine ninety nine, so I would need a ten dollar super chat. That would be the goal for tonight. Ten dollar super chat to get Adam a brand new knife. <laughs> Cause I don't know what happened to it and I lost it. It's gone. <laughs> uh let's see. They they look dead on that comic book cover. I know they look like they're made out of clay or something. It looks really weird. <laughs> ah, speaking moistly, thank you for dropping in. Good to see you, buddy. Pierre Rick. Everyone's saying hello. Good to see you. Thank you for dropping in and chilling with us. Uh, let's see. Rolando Flores, thank you for dropping in. Good to see you as always. <laughs> I can fly faster. Ah, uh, let's see. Speaking of Moisley say is Peric victory is uh, victory so costly it was pretty much a loss. Sweet. Hey, Cobweb Collector. Thank you for dropping in and kind of chilling with us as we take a look at this rock on. You're, you're just in time. I know I'm probably behind in the chat. We got 20 people in the chat. Wow, guys. That's awesome. Don't forget to like, guys. Uh, let's see. It really is. Yeah, it really is, says Mike. You just need to be careful of his arms and legs there, as they have been a few breakages of rock on so far. I don't know. Me and, me and Mike have been talking about this, and I want to bring this up, because I, I talked to Mike quite a bit, and we uh, noticed, like, some YouTubers that will do videos based on, like, the characters that are broken, like, uh, what the heck are these guys doing to their toys? Are they rough or what? I don't know what's going on, but me and Mike are on this agreement that we don't break our toys. I just, I don't know if we're just not being rough enough with our toys, or if we're just lucky, or what the case is. But it seems like everybody in their high horse is breaking their toys, and I don't know what the heck they're doing to them. Um, I might have broken maybe three toys out of the three and a half years I've been collecting action figures, so it's a very low percentage. I don't know what's going on with that, but yeah, kind of interesting every time someone tells me that they, they've been breaking their toys, I'm like, how in the heck are you breaking them? I don't know, man. Uh, now, of course, I am very careful, too. If I, if, I, um, if I notice a joint is really, really stiff, I won't put pressure on it. Uh, I, I will only go so far, so... Now it's now 
Knock on wood, I say that now and you watch me break this guy. <laughs> Uh, Carol's in the house. Good to see you, Carol. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, let's see. It was much easier to break the vintage line than these. Uh, Dendera Barbarian, thank you for dropping in. This comic reminds me of the awful horde mini comics from the 80s. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, though some pull the joints off uh, too hard or too fast without heating it if it need to be. That could be the main reason. That's the only uh, thing that I could think about is you're breaking it. Now, how many of these videos do you watch where the people are actually breaking the toy while they're recording? Are they breaking the toy while they're recording or are they, or are they doing the recording of the video and the toy is already broken? Uh, cause I'm kind of wondering about that. I'm wondering if people are breaking their toys on purpose to, uh, uh, to get some views. Now, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to claim that's the case, but I'm just kind of curious about that. Cause I'm wondering if there's people out there that would actually do that. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but anyway, uh, here we go. We've got, uh, let, we're going to start with the accessory. We're going to start with the accessory here. And I don't have the vintage gun unfortunately but i do have the vintage rock on when we get to it but here is the gun uh it's very similar to the vintage one i do recall the vintage one this one here is turns now i'm pretty sure the vintage one had back metal for this piece this plate uh let me know mike i'm pretty sure it was back metal for this piece uh it's done in a purple plastic uh got some engravings in it and stuff it looks really nice it's 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 a real nice gun you can kind of see it's like a radar dish. Very convenient for, for this type of cosmic warrior. Uh, you know, radar, satellite, that sort of thing. Give you a universe type of uh, nod. And it spins. It's like it's got his own little action fee feature to it. I could sit here and do that all day. It's like, uh, what do we, it's like Cyclone. <laughs> you can spin it. I love it. That's pretty cool. Uh, I think they added on this arm piece, because I think the vintage one only had this piece, right? And then you would plug it into his chest, but this one actually has a handle so that you can actually put it in his hands. I think that's the case. I wish I had the vintage one, because I can't remember. Let me see if I can pull up a quick image of the vintage one. Uh, let me see here. Masters of the Universe Vintage Rock On weapon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that looks class that's the classics one there's stone there 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 it is okay so you can see it here and yeah, it looks like, okay, so there is a little bit of a peg on the outside of it, because that's right, too. You had to plug it in their hand on the side, right? But that's kind of the same idea, sort of. But yeah, that definitely looks like vac metal to me. Where this one looks like it has more of a longer handle on it, but essentially the same idea. That's pretty cool. That's that. Hey, Bill is in the house. Good to see you, Bill. Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for dropping in. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go over Rock On, and then we'll uh, then we'll do a comparison with the vintage one, and then we'll go ahead and we'll transform him. I keep whacking my head off the camera. Uh, let's see here. Starting with the top of the head sculpt here, we've got a nice face. It's got some silver paint going on there. I wonder if I can pop this off easily. And yes, you can. You can pop the head off very easily. So, hypothetically, you could probably pop someone else's head on this. I uh, don't have any other characters out. Let me see here. Give me a sec here, folks. I want to check this out. Uh, let me see. We got my Origins uh, bin here. We got some Origins action figures in this bin. And let's use the Horde Trooper as our puppet. Puppeteer here. Let's try this out. Uh, 
to see if these uh, will fit or not, because I'm not really sure. Let's see if we can pop that Horde Trooper head on there. It does look like the same hole size. I can't see why not. This might look really funny. You know what's really funny is uh, the helmet is too long to get it to pop on properly, but it does, like I can't get it to pop all the way on. It just sits there because it's the helmet's on the inside is too long, but that's what it would look like. Maybe we can try somebody else that would actually fit. While I'm at it, can we turn Rock on into a Horde Trooper? Uh, indeed we can. <laughs> we can turn him into a Horde Trooper. It's kind of interesting. Let me see. What else do we got in the in this bag? Where's my origins uh, accessories? I don't know where that bag is. With all my head sculpts and stuff. Maybe we could do this guy, the snake trooper, infiltrator. I just want to see if this will fit. Yeah, it, it does go on. Yeah, it looks really strange, but it, it does fit. So you can put these on. Though it came off really easily. Strange enough as it is. Maybe it isn't the same size, because look at look at this. I put rock on, uh, on the peg here. It's the same size peg, though. That's weird. It's the same size peg. I don't understand why it's not going on there tightly. Kind of strange. Uh, last but not least, let me try Prince Adam. Let's try his head. Well, <laughs> It looks like he's got no neck, but it's uh, it does fit on there nice and tightly. That's funny. That's hilarious. Oh, looks like you can pull apart rock on from the waist. Wasn't sure you could do that. There's a good confirmation. And uh, where's my Prince Adam? I can't wait. I want to get the uh, Prince Adam and Cringer pack, two pack. I'm hoping to find that at some point. That's probably one I'll have to get Mike to find for me, because uh, heavens knows I won't find it here in Canada. Mike's been really good at finding the figures for me lately. Uh, okay. So anyway, that's the head sculpt. Looks pretty good. On the back of it, it's more of a silver with a very, very subtle blue. And you're going to see the difference with the vintage one here in a minute. Going back, we got the arms. You know, he's got the standard articulation. I'm pretty sure you can pull these arms out. Yep. They come out. I think the peg holes are a little bit smaller, too, if I'm not mistaken. Looks like they are. Hmm. Strange. Let me see that. Grab this horde trooper again and see. Just curious if it's the same size or not. I don't think it is. Yeah, it is. It's it's thinner. It's it's skinnier. The peg's uh, a lot thicker on the standard size versus the rock people. All right, that's interesting. Which means that this won't fit inside this. Nope. Completely loose. All right. Good to know. So, Rock-On's not really interchangeable. Not really. Maybe with the other Rock people, he will be once they come, but... Yeah, see, I got a real tight joint right here. It's extremely tight, and then once again, I forgot to bring some hot water on the tape for the table there to, to heat up these joints. But yeah, I can't bend that. I cannot bend that, and I don't dare risk it, because I know if I try, I'm going to break it. So, 
if people are breaking the arms and the legs, it's because they're they're forcing it without heating it up. It's the same with this one too. You you cannot move it, not without heating it up. Now, if I were to heat that up, I bet you I'd have no problems moving that, bending that in and out. I might have to run down and get some hot water. Because I'm really curious, because I want to do it. Uh, let's see, you can pull them apart. There's the waist. Looks good. we got some orange paint apps. Got that hole for the weapon on the bottom, so it's casted in a blue plastic. There's the legs. I think you can... Pull them apart from the legs here, but I'm not going to try it, but I know you probably can. Same articulation in the ankles, and he's got knee articulation, but yeah, like, all the joints on this are stiff. Every, every single one of them. So what I'm going to do real quickly, guys, is take a breather for a minute while I run downstairs and get some hot water, because I want to try this, and I'll be right back. Alright, well, a little bit of bummer news. We had some people in the household having some hot baths, so there's no hot water at the moment. So I can't do this, unfortunately. Um, I just wanted to basically see how far I can bend them and what it looks like sort of thing. But yeah, there's no hot water at the moment, so I can't do it. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to... I'll have to do it later. Bend up these joints later on. The only thing that I can bend is probably this piece here for the shoulder, and I can't even really do that, so not all the way anyway, not without heating it up. I got no means of heating it up right now. Probably not for a couple hours. It is what it is. At least I know now I won't be getting a hot bath later. <laughs> No, uh, no bath time with the uh, Dragon Blaster Skeletor tonight, unfortunately. Very unfortunate. But yeah, that's what he looks like, anyway. Let's put him back together. Does that mean I'm going to be able to transform him, I wonder? Hopefully. I should be able to transform him. Because I, I can move him at the hips, no problem. So we should be able to put him into a rock. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in, uh, before we do the transformation, 
Uh, I'll see what you guys are saying for a quick second, and then we'll bring in the vintage one, and we'll take a look here. See, see how accurate they got them. Uh, <laughs> and while I'm doing this, if you want to do the Rad Blast Contenders, uh, Toy Mama, feel free to do so right now while I'm uh, going through this chat. Let's see. Uh, those, yeah, snow joints are hard to go fast without heating it up. Needs to be, that could be the main reason. You think the vintage one would be stronger? It seems strong to me. I, I mean, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll see here in a minute. Speaking moistly, Rock is not a good Origins figure. His transformation is pretty poor. That's from what people were saying, yeah. People were saying that he was very, very poor. Uh, let's see, I spun the weapon of the vintage gun as I played. They shot with their guns. Ha, <laughs> cool. So you could spin the vintage one too, eh? That's neat. Yeah, <laughs> no, I didn't break it. Not yet, anyway. Uh, let's see, Braden, thank you for dropping in. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Does look odd. Does changing the head make the orange booty go away? <laughs> no, I don't imagine it will. It's the trap jaw situation with the rock on head. <laughs> I ripped out his arm. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, no, you can only swap with the female figure, sir. Oh, so does the female joints fit inside here? Let's try that. That's, that's a good idea. I, I just happen to have an evil in right here in front of me. Let's see here. Uh, would help if I pull out the right side. Is it the same size? Oh, yes, sir, it is. It is the same size as the female. Okay. So, yep, and it's a tight fit, too. Oh, my Lord, that looks so funny. Now I see. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, so you can only uh, do swap roonies with the females then. I see what they did. Sneaky Mattel. And the shenanigans. Shenanigans. See what they did there. I would have never caught that. <laughs> you guys are on the ball tonight. Eldor's on the ball. Yeah, the War Troopers are awesome. I don't know. Maybe with Trapjaw. I don't have my Trapjaw handy, though. He's packed away somewhere. Yeah, I don't have a hairdryer. <laughs> so, I'm kind of screwed. Smoke them if you have them. Uh, Tasty Cake, good to see you. <laughs> what did he do? Oh, uh, I was going to go downstairs and get some hot water so that I could heat up these joints, but uh, someone was taking some baths in the house, so uh, there's no hot water left. Uh, so unfortunately, I can't uh, I can't loosen up the joints. I'll have to do it another day. Good to see you, Tasty Cake. He had a live stream earlier. We had some fun hanging out. We were talking. We were actually talking about Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, since we're going to be doing him this Friday. Uh, we were talking about the dragon, and I like how the dragon's got a nice padlock. Actually, I'll just show it to you. Or no, I don't have mine here. It's at it's at Toy Mama's place. Both my uh, Ricky the Steamboats are over at her place because we're giving one out to uh, Speaking Moistly, so they're at her house. Uh, he's not on the back of that package. Maybe he's on Piper's package. Let's see here. Might be on this one. There he is. So we're talking about the padlock on the dragon, but it doesn't come with the chain. So I'm thinking about going to the dollar store and getting a chain for that padlock. Just so that um, I could take the dragon chain and wrap it around uh, Ricky's arm or whatever, or his hand, so he can carry it. Uh, that's kind of what I want to do. If I can think of it, if I can remember to go down there, or maybe if Toy Mama has like a little chain that I can use. I mean, she probably does. 
uh, so that I could use it for my Ricky Steamboat. Put him in the bath! <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, unfortunately, they, it'll be a cold bath. <laughs> That'll teach him. I uh, give you my hair dryer, but you're too far away. <laughs> yeah, that would take too long. Honestly, it would take so damn long. Put hot water on the uh, on the boiler. It would, would take so damn long. You guys would be here for like ten minutes before I'd get that done. It would literally like I've got the we I've got the electric stove, so it's the ones that have like. Uh, not the old-fashioned burners, but the ones that kind of, they have the element inside of them, and they, they take forever to heat up. Literally take forever. Now, if I was at Toy Mama's place, she's got the old burner style, and they heat up instantly, so. I would definitely boil water there, but where I'm here, it would take forever. Uh, the toys tongue on by. Thank you for dropping in. Thank you for hanging out. Okay, so let's bring in the vintage one, because we've got both. We have two vintage ones, so I can't wait till we get stoned there, but we got vintage rock on, and we got vintage stoned there. So let's uh, unravel rock on, first and foremost, and see what, how accurate they got this guy. Now he's a little bit yellowed, or faded, or whatever you want to call it. The inside's more green, but you guys get the idea. And there's the faces. So, more of an expression on the Origins line, for sure. And more of a... More of a bright blue versus an aqua blue, or whatever you want to call this blue. This one's really blue. A darker orange. Brighter orange over here. But yeah, same concept for the, the peg hole. This one's a little bit smaller, but this one's bigger. And, of course, you know, the added articulation. And, uh, and the rocks were sculpted to the legs, right? On the vintage ones and the hands. And the only way you could plug in the weapon is right there on that side of the hand. You couldn't do it on the other side because it was a fist. But this time around, we got our hands. So, you know, I thought they did a pretty good job for the, for the rock form. Or for the uh, humanoid form. And if you want to plug the weapon in... To the uh, Origins one, there it is. You just, it just plugs right in. And it stays in there, it doesn't fall out. And you can also put it in his hand if you want to. Not sure how you're supposed to, maybe sideways. Like this. There we go, if you want to put it in his hand like that, that'll work. He's a side shooter. It's pretty cool. Pretty neat. I wonder if this gun will fit in the vintage hand or the chest. I'm curious. I don't think it will. No, it does not. It's too, unfortunately, it's too big for the hole, so you can't plug it into the vintage one. It'd be kind of neat if you could buy an extra Origins and just use a, one for your vintage, but it doesn't work. Which means you're not going to be able to plug it in the hand either. Not even close. Does not fit. Very unfortunate. I mean, you can make it fit if you had an extra gun and you don't mind trimming it down. Then you can make it fit by uh, destroying the weapon a little bit. Completely up to you. There they are. There's the bottom. So yeah, you can see that, you know, it's very inspired by the vintage one. They got all the chest art on the front of them pretty darn accurate. It's the exact same. Even the designs that's inside the rock on the Origins matches the designs uh, in here. So, right on. They, they, they got it really good. The only thing that I dislike about it uh, is the back. There's the, the wash is very blue. Or is it, no, it's the opposite. Because on the vintage one, it's a blue plastic with a gray wash, but on this one, it's a silver plastic with a blue wash. But the blue wash is very subtle. It barely has any on it. 
so let's go ahead and do the thing that everybody is waiting for. And that's the transformation of this guy. So uh, we'll transform the vintage one first. We'll get him back. So there's the vintage one. Oh, and if you guys want to see the stone dar one too, here's our stone dar. We'll talk about stone dar in a minute, actually, because I've got some things I want to talk about him. Uh, so there's the there's the what the vintage one looks like, right? It's very well done. All the parts are hidden. Very good job. And you could still put the weapon in the chest if you had it. I, I don't have the weapon, but... Uh, so let's see what this looks like when we transform him. First time doing it. Uh, let's put the head down. The head, look, this is a ratchet joint, and I love it. Uh, it's really cool. It feels like a ratchet joint in the very least. Uh, already there seems to be a gap going on here. This is scary. But then again, I don't have the uh, I don't have anything heated up yet, so I, I can't heat anything up. Uh, let's bend that lag down. Let's bend the other one down. And yeah, that's essentially it. It it is done pretty poorly. I would have to admit. Uh, big gaps going on here, here, and yes, you see the uh, the orange butt cheeks. They are definitely present. Uh, yeah, so they kind of dropped the ball on that. Now, I wonder uh, how they could have fixed that. What's a way that they could have fixed that? While still uh, retaining some articulation. What I was thinking that they could have done is make separate pieces that pull off. Like, pull the pieces off and then, I don't know. Wow, it comes apart very easily. But yeah, the, the rock form doesn't look very good, does it? It's very poor. It's like a high 5 out of 10 at best, maybe a 6 out of 10. It, it's pretty poor. Look at the gap. Look at it, guys. Look at the huge gaps. Even if I heat this up, I'm still not going to... It's still going to have a gap there. It just doesn't look quite right. The vintage one uh, nailed it. This one's just ugh. I don't know. It doesn't look right. He looks great in the in the humanoid form. It looks perfectly fine, but you know, as soon as you transform him, he looks pretty. He looks pretty bad. I wonder uh, if they'll correct that mistake with Stonedar. Oh, that's bad. It's like there's a gap in every single joint. Can't say I'm too impressed. One of the weaker action features in the line. But, all in all, I still like them. I, I still like it, regardless. At least it's half there, anyway. It's 50% there. Really, it's uh, really the part that bugs you the most is this piece. The orange showing. That's the part that's really annoying. Uh, but aside from that, once you heat them up and, uh, you know, you loosen up the joints, uh, you know, it's it's pretty good. I, I, like, I like it other than that. I still like the character. I can't help but... What is going on with this? Look at the freaking... What the hell? Oh, okay. This is weird. So, when you have the feet out, the rock doesn't show on the side. It, it goes like this, but when you transform him, you need to move his ankle so his ankle goes sideways. Like that. And it's so weird to have to do that. I'm just noticing it. So, like, in human form, you got to turn it back so that the feet and ankles are straight. Because if you put them sideways, you turn it sideways, it looks so weird. So weird how they did it. I guess they had to do it to compensate for the articulation, so I get it. It, it just felt weird. I, I thought I thought there was something wrong with the figure. I thought, like, uh, they sculpted it wrong or something. But I think these are... 
I want to say these are glued. Is has anybody actually attempted to try to remove any of these rock pieces? Like, has anybody actually tried to do it? It looks like they're pegged in there, but they also look like they're glued in there, so I don't want to take any risks of breaking it. The only thing I can do is do the twist. Like, I can turn them. I just can't bend the, the, the hinges. I can't bend them without heating them up. He'll, he'll definitely break if I dare try it, so... But yeah. That's pretty poor, uh, I gotta say, uh, for the rock form. Not too impressed with that at all. I didn't think it was actually going to be that bad, because, you know, you can't tell how bad something is until you actually get it in your hands and you do it yourself. And, uh, yeah. Very unfortunate. But, I'm not going to put them in rock form. Um, now the vintage ones, I actually like keeping them in the rock form on the shelf. I actually like that. Uh, but for this, I probably would have did the rock form. Actually, I probably would have did that had it would have been better. So it is kind of a bummer for me. So I guess he's just going to have to go like that on the shelf. Uh, let's see how well he stands up. Does he stand up good at least? Yeah, he stands pretty good. Uh, I don't have any problems with the standing, so there's that. That's a plus. You know, he's not top heavy or anything like that. He's pretty good. Can't wait for stone or, or stone dar. I'm gonna have to get one. Yeah, pretty cool. I like I, I do like the design. I just wish they could have incorporated the, the back legs a little better uh, for the uh, for the butt. That would have been cool. Oh well, man, he looks like his knees are all twisted, twisted and twisted a hundred different ways. This looks so funny. Heh. <laughs> yeah, you get him in the sweet spot, he'll stand up. Pretty good for the most part. So, uh, stone dar. You guys want to see the? This is our vintage stone dar. So, uh, obviously, compared to rock on, he's gonna have what essentially looks like a completely different sculpt. This guy should be a hundred percent new tooling. He really should, except for like the ratchet joints or whatever. But the rest of it should be because you know, look at the comment. The comments. Uh, the crater holes, I should say, is what I wanted to say. All the craters that are sculpted into the toy should make the return on the Origins one. So it should be a completely different sculpt. I mean, if you look at the vintage one, side by side, they're, they're not the same at all. Just the concept of transforming them is the same. But the comets are completely different. This is more of a, you know, a, like a glacier rock sort of look, where this is more of a comet look. And I'm hoping that they do, they'll probably do the opposite. They'll probably do them all blue on the back with a little bit of gray wash is probably what they're going to do. Uh, he's got some copper on the inside for paint apps, so we should be mimicking that. And once again, uh, the only thing that's going to be reused is probably this thing. Expect to see this exact weapon for Stonedar, except for a different color plastic. That's the only thing we should see different. So if they do it right, uh, and if I'm correct, and they do a whole new tooling for this guy, uh, they should correct the transformation. It gives them the opportunity to correct the transformation. So let's see if they do it, guys. Let's hope that they do. Uh, let's hope for the best. I don't know what else I could say about that. Uh, my phone likes to shut off on me. There we go. Let's go, Sonic. Uh, where did I leave off here? Hey, uh, figuratively speaking, John's in the house. Good to see you, John. 
Uh, let's see, the toys of Tom gone by. Rock On looks so awesome. Mattel really captured the vintage face sculpt. Yeah, they did. The, the face looks good. Uh, I and and uh, and anyway, uh, if anything, they improved on it. I thought for the head sculpt. Um, this one, like, I don't know. Is it just me? But this one is more of a happy smiley face. This is more of a frown. It's like a, it's like a smiley face, but an evil one. You know what I mean? And then this one is more of a happy one. So, but yeah, they they, they definitely improved upon it. It looks really good. Uh, very happy with the head sculpt for sure. I got no complaints there. Uh, I've seen some vintage with more silver on his back and some are more blue. Okay, I see. So it's different across the board, is it? Uh, I've just recognized, like, the one I had growing up, too, had a lot of blue on it. So I guess it does vary. And let's see, moving on down here. Yeah, the origins can't uh, came close, right? And you can see his butt. And you can see his butt, yeah. Uh, they at least could have painted his butt blue, or yeah, I suppose, or silver, you know, whichever. I'm just wondering if there is a way that they could have put in like an extended rock piece while still being able to articulate them. You know what I mean? I wonder if they could have pulled that off. Like, leave the top piece the way it is, but put it just a little bit, like... It's almost like they miscalculated. Like, just a centimeter more, or two cent... Like, maybe a centimeter or two, a little more for the butt, for that hind leg, and then it probably would have... It probably would have covered it. They they just missed the mark on it. You know, it is what it is. Yeah, it, it is pretty. You know, the transformation's not very good. Um, but you know, would you rather this, or would you rather have it so that he doesn't have all these articulated joints? I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they could have done anything different to really fix this guy. I mean, he still transforms. It's just, you know... It's not just not perfect, that's all. Unfortunately, there's... There's way too many gaps. Even in the arms here, there's... The gaps are really big. But at least these... At least for the arms, they're silver, right? So they're a little bit more forgivable. But all in all, I still like it. I still like it because I love Rock On and he feels really good. He's got that wonderful smell, new smell, uh, uh, plastic smell. Love it. Uh, I'm still happy with it. Just not the transformation, that's all. But, you know. Still looks good, though. I'm pretty happy overall with him. Here we go. The only other thing I would have liked to see is more of a blue wash on him. That's the only other thing I would have liked. But I suppose I could, if I had an extra one, I would just take some spray paint and do a little bit of extra wash on him. <laughs> uh, why did they do that way with the orange bottom? Yeah, I know everybody's making fun of that. Everybody on their high horse is making fun of that. <laughs> Yeah, the, well, the classics was a was a little different because the classics pieces you could take them off, and to do the final to do the actual final transformation, they had uh, I think it was a, a big piece that covered either the front or covered the back. I can't remember. I think it was the front, and and then you put it together, and that was their fix. But at least it worked. But if you did, if you had them in the humanoid form, you had to put that extra piece aside. So it was kind of weird. So they kind of they kind of messed up the classics version too. To be honest, they couldn't they couldn't quite get it right. 
The only one they got it right with, it seems to be, is the vintage one. Right, yeah, I agree. The toys have gone to, to, gone by. I guess, I guess that's the best they could do to keep the articulation. It seems to be, anyway. It's either that or they miscalculated. and they. I don't know. I think they could have put a... I think they could have extended this a little bit further. I mean, it's what, like maybe two centimeters, if that? I mean, let me see my friggin' measuring tape here. Yeah, they just need it like, um... Definitely less than a half inch, they just need it like this more. On a measuring tape. You know, just a little, little piece. Like something like that, that's all they would have needed. To, um get it complete. I think they might have been able to pull it off. I'm not sure though. I, s I suppose it'd be rubbing on the back here. Maybe they couldn't. I don't know. I'm really not sure. This is what he is. So do we have our rad contenders uh, toy mama? Hey Kenzo and USA. Thank you for dropping in. Good to see you. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, guys. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe if, you, if you're new to the channel. Or for people that are watching later. Yeah, yeah, you can still turn the ankle. Yeah, it, it most certainly can. You can turn the ankle. That's that's not a problem. You can even hinge it. Uh, that's the only thing I can move on mine, because the, the rest of my joints are too tight without heating them up. So, But yeah, you can still move quite a bit. Pigeon toe rock on. They are pegged and glued, says Dindar Barbarian. Okay, cool. I figured as much. I wasn't sure if they were glued, but they certainly look like they're pegged in there. I was very curious to see whether or not you would be able to remove the rock pieces, but I figured they were at the very least going to be separate pieces. And I was at least right about that. That's cool. I mean, he does look really neat when he's in a humanoid form. I, I like it, you know? It looks really cool. I think they did a good job with just this portion of it. It looks pretty cool. I still like it. Chubby Checker can do the twist. <laughs> Welcome in, Kenzo. Thank you for dropping in. Yeah, it is poorly, unfortunately, for the transformation. It is what it is. My pet rock, my pet monster. <laughs> my pet rock. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm going to go outside and add uh, googly eyes to some rocks. Then, then I'll be good. There you go. <laughs> and drill a hole in a rock so that you can, in, in the chest of a rock so that you can put the gun in there and there on a real rock. And there you go. You got your rock transformation. You know what I should, man, that, that, now that you're saying that, I, I should have did that as a joke. I should have went outside and, and brought in a big friggin' rock and said, Oh, here you go, guys. There's the rock transformation. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking that way. That would have been funny. Uh, I like the way Stonedar looks. Put him on the moon scene. Yeah, I think that will be... Hopefully, he'll be fixed by the time they bring him op bring bring him out. They did a good job with the vintage one. Let's see if they get it right with the Origins one. Let's see if they get it right. Only time will tell. We'll find out. We shall find out. <laughs> Mike P, the orange cheeks. Thanks for dropping in, bud. Uh, I definitely going to paint his cheek silver when I remember to do it. <laughs> there you go. Kind of looks like those leather pants with the butt cheeks cut out, right? Uh, uh, what's his, I know what pants you're talking about. Um, it's those, uh, leather chaps that, the uh, what's his name wore it in that movie? Uh, oh, uh, do you, ever, you guys ever see the movie Armed and Dangerous? Uh, it was uh, John Candy and uh, it was it Gene Levy? Uh, he wore the uh, 
he wore the chaps and the butt was showing. <laughs> and you could see the top of the ass cheeks. And uh, they had to go in a strip joint. It was like a Chippendale gay club or whatever. And uh, they came out. When they came out, his butt was showing. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what that reminds me of since you said that. That was such a funny movie. Let me see. I'm going to see if I can bring up a picture of that so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. I got to show. Uh, that, that was funny. <laughs> uh, armed and dangerous. Uh, let's see. His name was Norman in the show. Let's see if we can find a picture of it. See if I can find a... There There he is there. But I don't know if we could find a picture of him with the, with the lag chaps. But there... I don't know if anybody has any screenshots of it or whatever. But that's what the movie's from. And there's the pants that he wore. Oh, wait. I think I just seen it. There it is. <laughs> this is probably a better shot. So you can see his ass cheeks, right? In the leather pants. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I gotta go back and watch that movie. It was so funny. Oh, my Lord. Ah, uh, that's exactly what that reminds me of. You had to put that image in my head. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, let's see, should have given this big girl a hollow rock to put over rock on. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Toy Mama says the rod contenders are Mike, uh, Bill, Cobweb Collector, Tasty Cake. Uh, the time, the toys of, uh, the toys of a time gone by in Kenzo's creations and Mike B. Oh, wow, we got a lot of contenders. You guys, place your votes in, please. Or I'm just going to pick somebody random. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got one vote for Mike. Hey, Black Phoenix. It's so funny. It's and and what they ended up doing in the movie is they put they put the they put a map to cover his ass. <laughs> it was so funny. If you haven't seen that movie, you got to go watch it. It's so funny. John Candy. It's called Armed and Dangerous. It's such a good movie. <laughs> Oh man, we had man, we had some good movies back there. I know I'm getting off topic here, but damn, they had some good movies back then. Damn, it was so good. Eugene Levy, yeah, yeah so naughty. <laughs> uh, let's see, Black Penis, because he got his rock on a few weeks ago. Good, good. Usually we save the movie talk and stuff for Friday night, so. You guys can think of funny stuff like that, like at random. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got one vote for Tasty Cake. We got one for uh, Mike. That is weird. Uh, no, weird Fantastic Toys. Manic Plastic Toy Shop. Yeah, Eugene Levy or whatever his name is. That's exactly the, the guy. The, the guy who plays the father on American Pie. It's the same guy. So you haven't seen that movie. You need to go, you need to go watch it. Uh, I miss SCTV with those guys. Yeah, yeah. Saturday Night Live was freaking cool too. Yeah, you can't do yourself. <laughs> hey, Jamie Sanders. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, we got another one from Mike B. 
All right. And then we had one from Master Versal Toy Hunter. Was that a vote for Mike Fee, or were you just saying hello to Mike Fee? Well, here's a question. Has Mike Fee had been rad blasted yet? Did we ever blast him before? I like to give the priority to the new people, if possible. But, ultimately, your votes will be... Uh... Okay, so you guys want to do Mike as... as... Any, any, uh, any, um, uh, what am I thinking here? Any, uh, can't even think, I can't even think straight. <laughs> okay, so he hasn't. Okay, okay. All right, let's, let's do that. Any, uh, um, what's that thing they say in court? Any last uh, words or, you know, any uh, any objections? That's what I'm trying to say. If no objections, we'll do, uh, we'll do Mike B. All right, Mike B. Okay, let's do Mike B. So everybody, well, so what we do, for those who are unfamiliar, uh, I should probably explain it. Uh, rad Blasting, what we do is we take an individual that's been interactive in the chat, uh, that's literally the only requirement that you have to do. Uh, and then we'll go on to that individual's channel, if they have content, or an Instagram, whichever they would like to prefer. Uh, usually I do the YouTube first, Instagram is a secondary thing. Or uh, whatever whatever social media that you, that you use the most of. And uh, we go over there and we hit 10 likes on uh, diff 10 different videos. So one like on each, on 10 different videos, right? And then we leave a comment. So the idea is if we have 10 people in the chat room, let's say we had 10, 10 people in the chat room, if all 10 of those people would hit 10 likes, that would give that person 100 likes in less than five minutes. How awesome is that? So let's get over there. Uh, drop the link into his channel. There's Mike B. Uh, Eldor's got the link. Let's get over there. And uh, what you can do is hit 10 different likes, 10 different videos, and come back. When you're done. Uh, when you're done, you can just go ahead and follow along as I go through it. Now, I don't know if... Do you have content? Do you have content, Mike, on YouTube? Uh, what does it say here? This page is unavailable. unavailable. Uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> refer to Behold Your Peace. That's what I meant to say. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, so do you guys, uh, let me know, Mike, if you have content. Do you have content on YouTube? Yes, you do. Okay, so it's just my phone acting up then. Let, let me refresh this. It's just my phone acting up then. I'm pretty sure I'm already subscribed to you. I'm almost positive I am. Oh, sorry, that's Eldor. Let me, let me do this a different way. Uh, let me click on Mike B. And then go to channel. There he is. Okay, 117 subscribers and 94 videos. We want to give this guy some subs. That would be even great too. Okay, so what do you do the most of? Do you do live? Oh, okay. You got a new one scheduled for nine days. Let's do, let's, let's hit a like on that one. And I'll even put, you've been rad blasted on there. You have been rad blasted. And if people put that, People will know it, it came from this stream. There we go. So we'll put the comment in there already. Uh, right on his brand new video that hasn't even aired yet. And there we go. Yeah, I do have a couple likes on your on your videos. So I definitely checked you out. I just can never remember because there's so many people that I keep up with, right? Uh, okay, there's one. Actually, two. Uh, let's see. This this will be three. We got some Turtles of Grey Skull stuff going on here. We got four. We got five. Let's see if we can get some this guy some subscribers too. Uh, let's see. We got six, seven, eight. Nine, and one more. Oh, this is easy. Ten. Sometimes it's hard to rad blast people that, you know, I've, I've hit so many likes on them. And, 
uh, people like Eldor, uh, I seem to hit every like button on his videos because I never seem to miss his content. And it can be hard to rad blast him, so sometimes I have to go over to his Instagram instead. <laughs> Alright, so that concludes rad blasting, so there you have it. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you never know. Like, uh, it really pays to drop in somebody's live stream, even if, even if it's a character that you don't like or you're not too fond of, and somebody's doing a live stream, it really pays off to just drop into their stream because you never know what they're going to do for you. You never know. Uh, I've had it happen to me many, many a times where I would drop in just to say hello and, and hit the like button for them. And next thing you know, they're, next thing you know, they're, I'm getting subscribers. So uh, it really pays to, uh, to drop into people's lives. It really does. Even if it's just a video game stream, you just, you just never know. You never know. If you're a content creator and you want to grow, it's it's a, it's an alternative way to get some growing help. Get to know the community, right? Because we're a pretty tight community. What I call the second generation YouTubers. We're, we're pretty tight. And there, Mike also has a Patreon. There you go. If you want to... Uh, uh, let's see. if uh, Maybe Eldor or... Uh, or uh, Toy Mama, you want to drop his Patreon link in there? Feel free to do so. Uh, let's see, I've always heard about Mike V on Hebro's page. Okay, cool. It's been a moment since I watched Hebro. I gotta watch him again. I used to love watching his content. I just, I just been so busy, right? So it's, it's hard for me to get caught up with every single person. But I try to rotate you guys as much as I can, and I try to catch some people's lives when I can. Uh, but some, some nights I get really busy, like I get, uh, pretty soon I think I'll be going pretty full force at this channel. I've been going pretty crazy with it lately. Especially now where I'm adding in the video game streams to the, to the mix. So we're gonna, we're gonna do, we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna live stream the, the Ghostbusters video game tomorrow. Cause I, I really want to finish that video game off, so, uh, we'll do that tomorrow. Because I really want to get to this one on Sunday. I want to do this one on Sunday. Uh, WWE 2K14. And we're going to do the 30 years of WrestleMania. So starting with WrestleMania 1 with Andre the Giant. So Mum's favorite character. So that's where we're going to start with. And uh, we'll do probably, you know, we'll probably get to four or five matches, depending on how good I can get at the game. I've been playing it the past couple days just to get used to the controls. When I first popped this in, I haven't played a wrestling game in so long. I suck so bad, but now I'm kind of getting used to this one and how to play it a little bit. And eventually, I'm going to get the 2K24, the new one. Eventually, because I do have a PlayStation 5. Uh, eventually I'm going to get that, but, uh, I might wait to stream that one when I get, uh, my new PC upgrade, so. We're accepting donations, uh, for, uh, towards a PC upgrade. We're almost there. We're over halfway mark. We got, I think we got about six, I want to say we got 600 out of the one grand that we have raised for it. So, we accept super chats, Patreon, all that fun stuff. We've got, we got like, I think I've got like nine Patreon members right now. So, if you guys are interested in that, I hope I get some rad blasting. It helps to do a lot of Moto content. Yeah, well, if you haven't been rad blasted before, uh, you'll probably get hit next time. So, uh, there's a good chance. Let me look at your channel for a minute. Okay, so 466 subs. I'll subscribe to you right now. Because I, for some reason, I, I, are you new? Because I haven't subscribed to you yet. Like, are you new to my channel, I should say. Anyway, I got you subscribed, and uh, we'll hit you up on the next one. We'll probably hit you up. Just remind me. Because I do like to give it to the people that, uh, that are new. Uh, now, when you get rad blasted, I should tell you tell you guys this now. When you get rad blasted, you go on a 30-day rotation. So, you're not allowed to be rad blasted for 30 days. It gives other people a chance. And I do give priority to the new people. So, keep that in mind. If new people come in, I like to rad blast them first. 
but eventually everybody will get rad blasted a second time, second and third time, and so on and so forth. Eventually we get to you again. We, we actually, Toy Mama is the one that kind of takes control of it. She writes all the names down. She, she, she takes care of all that stuff. Yeah, there's always next Wednesday. We only do it on Wednesdays. I, I Once in a blue moon, I do it on a Friday. But uh, I, I try to keep it to Wednesdays. I try to do it just once a week. I, I, ha I've, I have done it before on our Friday nights. But, you know, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But usually a rule of thumb, I just do it on Wednesdays. Let's see, uh, I'm the one that keeps track. Yep, so she keeps track of all that stuff. So just keep a, just remind us if you're in on one next Wednesday, remind us and we'll make sure we hit you up. And let's see, Kenso's Creations, you haven't been Rod Blast either? Okay. And I've got you subscribed, I knew that. So there you go. Well, I'll make sure that you guys get blasted uh, as a priority. You just have to remind me, because I will forget. Toy Mama will remember, though. She has a better memory than I do. All right, Dandar Barbarian, you're heading out. Thank you for dropping in, buddy. Appreciate you chilling with us. Uh, if you're around tomorrow, we're going to do the Ghostbusters game. If you just want to come and chill and hang out. Uh, probably, I'm probably going to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it at the same time. Maybe I'll do it at um, maybe I'll do it at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Either either six or seven. I haven't decided yet. Maybe I'll do it at six because I assume it's probably going to be a two-hour stream, uh, and I'd like to get it. Yeah, maybe I'll do it at six or something like that because it'll the stream will probably go to late. Assuming that the game is going to be two hours long. Uh, I think I'm on the last couple stages, but they are fairly long. <laughs> Another lifetime. There you go, Mike P. Just subscribed to Toys Gone By. So there we go. We got lots of subscribers back and forth just by just dropping in. That's that's the way to do it. That's what we're all about. We want to grow together, right? That's the that's the way to do it. Grow together. And let other people know. Let other people know. Say, hey, man, you ever you want to grow your channel? Get in there and drop into radical toys, and you know, let other people know too. I'm about sharing the wealth. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, it's time for me to do cleanup, and it ain't much of a cleanup. Uh, what I am going to do, uh, I was debating whether to put rock on. No, I'll put rock on in my in my container here, because I, I, I am moving, so that's why I got all my Origin toys put away, because I'm in the process of moving. And it's a long, hefty process, and uh, I'm not going to be moving till August, but I'm, I've gotten a head start on myself to uh, to get things going. So he'll be packed away. I could put him on the shelf, I suppose. But then that's one more figure. You know, next thing you know, I'm putting them all out again. I'll just put them away. I need to start a new uh, a new bag here in my bin. That one's too small. I don't have any more freezer bags. Maybe I can fit them in this one. Do 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 do. I got Russell. I got the. I've had the Hulkamania theme song, Hulk Hogan's theme song, stuck in my head all freaking day. I can, I just can't get rid of it. Bum, 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 bum. 
Now that ain't gonna fit in there, so I guess that I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna need to buy a new bin. I need new bins. I need to get some more plastic totes because my stuff is full. So we'll put rock on and stone there back into the, the bin here. Not much of a cleanup, pretty simple. Hmm. Yeah, real cool car dirt. I like that. And that's a wrap, guys. That's it for tonight. Appreciate you guys uh, dropping in. We had a great, we had a great uh, gang tonight. We had what, 20, I think I seen 20, 21 people come in tonight. So that was good. At least at all at one time. <laughs> Fight for your life. Yeah, I got it stuck in my head. <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. I can't wait till we get to this one. This is my favorite wrestler, right? Can't wait till we get till we open this one up. I've been really wanting this figure. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Him and uh, I got the. Uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do Macho Man and Roddy Piper here, but I got Ricky Steamboat. We got Becky. Uh, we got Roman Reigns. We're gonna be doing some of those ones over on Friday nights, uh, Christina. So. Toy Mama. We're going to be doing that at her place. We're actually going to be doing uh, w Masters of the WWE every Friday for probably the next month or month, month and a half. Something like that. Or at least the next month anyway. Uh, see, Walmart has the $3 now. Are, am I going to let Christina open Macho Man? I don't know. I'm kind of scared. I don't know if I if I dare allow her to. I'm going to have to get a... I'm going to have to get a... No, well, no. I'm opening... I'm opening Macho Man here, so... I don't... I don't have to worry about it. I don't got to worry about that. It's going to be opened here. <laughs> She's not going to be here, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see when the pandemic was on this is how i got by watching toy content and definitely got me into it all through yeah me too uh, that's how i started the channel i started the channel uh just before the pandemic hit uh that's when i started um so i think it was 20 the end of 2020 summers around there so i've been doing the channel now for uh, what am I going on four years now? Something like that. If I haven't already hit the four year mark, something like that anyway. But how I started was I was doing the, I was doing the vlogs and it was right around the same time as the, um, uh, the first, uh, the, the, when the masters of the WWE was were out, right? Just before the wave one origins was out. That's I was doing the toy logs. That's what I was doing. And then I was doing like the toy reviews. For my early content. And then I kind of switched it up a bit. Ended up going live. Meeting a lot of people. and Just been kind of growing from there. <laughs> Gang up on Toy Mama. I see how it is. <laughs> yeah we had. Um, uh, let me see if I can show you guys. The ones that we had. And I actually got them in doubles. Uh. I think they're over on the shelf there. Let me see. I think they're over here. Yeah. These were some of the ones that we got at our Walmart. Uh, my favorite one in the line right here, Jake the Snake. We got Jake the Snake. I got him in doubles, and um, let me see. I gave the I gave the extra away to. Um, J80 Hobbies because it's his favorite wrestler and uh, Jay always sends out figures to me so I was like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna send this out to him so I sent this out to him and not only did I do that I sent out some I drew a picture I, I'm an artist too right so I draw a lot of 
artwork and stuff and I drew a picture of Jake the Snake for him and and uh yeah I sent that out to him. Uh we got the Ultimate Warrior. We actually got plagued with this one. Lots and lots of this one. And believe it or not, I found another slew of these at the dollar store. These ended up at our dollar store, so I ended up buying extras. I think I still have I think I still have a couple extra on card. I think I got a warrior on card. I might have a cane on card. Uh Mr. T was another one that came to Walmart. I bought him in doubles. And I think I sold off the the other one that I had. Somebody I think it was um Lou. Yeah, Lou Gadet, he really wanted it. So I sold it off to him. And uh this guy came to Walmart. Uh, Bray Wyatt, or however you pronounce his name. I keep wanting to call him The Fiend. Is that what his name is? The Fiend? Yeah, I got him. Pretty cool figure. And there was a few other ones that I got that are probably packed away somewhere. I got like Stephanie McMahon. Uh, can't remember who else I got. Oh, uh, Roman Reigns. Um, Seth, Seth Rollins, that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah. So we got some cool figures. Yeah, I'll show you some of the artwork that I do. I'll show you. Uh, I got lots of artwork. I got a binder full of it. I actually like... Uh, a lot of the guys that you see, a lot of the toy guys, if you look at their logo designs, uh, 9 out of 10, I'm the one that probably did it. <laughs> Uh, I've done, uh, in here, I've done Tasty Cakes, I've done uh, Toy Mamas, Mine, uh, Mike, not Mike Fee, but um, uh, Manic Plastic Toy Shop, I've done, uh, who else have I done in here? There's quite a Cobweb Collector, I've done his. Uh, quite a few of them in here that I've done. A lot of the toy guys that, I, that I've done. Uh, and who's the other guy? Um, Master Versal Toy Hunter Eldor. I've done his, too. I do all kinds of different types of drawing, too. I don't just do one style. Uh, I do inking. I do sketching. I'm kind of like an all-jacks-trade type of artist. But, you know, I was doing some Ghostbusters silhouette stuff, so I was drawing some of this stuff. Uh, T-1000. Uh, let's see, we got Mr. Miyagi. So these are some silhouette stuff that I drew. Uh, if you guys ever watched the movie The Crow, big fan of that. And we got some pencil sketches. Doctor Strange. Oh, there's Tasty Cake's uh, concept art before I filled it in, his logo design that I did. I like to take people and turn them into cartoon characters. That's like my thing. Did some Voltron coloring and some Voltron drawing with uh, Allison. So we did some Voltron stuff. Now there's the Joker. Uh, Rick Moranis is Lewis Tully. Uh, ha uh, Hawk, Masters of the Universe. Very proud of that one. <laughs> I got some Thundercats, pencil sketching. Get She-Ra. Oh, look at that, Mega J Retro. <laughs> Final Fantasy, big fan of Mortal Kombat. Catwoman. Some more She-Ra stuff. Uh, if you guys know that guy from YouTube, uh, what's his name? Uh, Happy Console Gamer. Yeah, I drew him. I actually sent this to him for Christmas. <laughs> I did some Brave Star. I've actually done some comic strips that I never finished. Like, I can I can do, like, uh, like the funnies, like the comic strip funnies. I do those, too. We got some Sergeant Slaughter, G.I. Joe style. 
you know, Shadow Weaver. Uh, we did Wookie Sasquatch's uh, logo design. That was his concept art, too. Uh, there's uh, Keanu Reeves. Some more Sergeant Slaughter. And some Superman. There's Evil Lynn. We did some Battle Toads. You guys remember that video game? There's Cobweb Collector's uh, design, his concept design. Uh, I put the Sorceress in a bikini because she's my favorite character. Uh, I did Gambit from X Men, Bill Murray. You guys ever hear the video game Shenmue? And this guy is a Reagan pacifist. He's a, he's a YouTuber as well. There's one Omega J Retro before he had his big beard. MacGyver. Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox. It's another MacGyver one I was working on that I never finished. Mr. T. <laughs> Ray from Ghostbusters. Egon. We got some Tila. Another cool drawing I made up. I did all kinds of stuff. I got so many drawings. There's Pixel Dan. <laughs> I draw a lot of stuff. My cool Orko. Yeah, just some samples of some stuff that I draw. The stuff that I, I find I like drawing now, though, is the logo design. That's the stuff that I really like to do. Like the, um, the, uh, cart like turning people into cartoons, doing some graphic designs. That's the stuff that I like to do now. Which, uh, I'm kind of overdue for doing some more. It's been a moment since I did some. I think the last one I did was Tasty Cakes. I think it was the last one I did. Oh, you actually drew a comic book. That's cool, man. That's really awesome. Anywho, is the oh R Radical Sister just dropped in time? Good. You got to see the artwork. <laughs> go back, go back. Says Hyperdelic. <laughs> Damn sorcerers! Wow. Uh, which girl? Oh, that was just um. Somebody, a uh, friend of mine online. I can't even remember her name. Sometimes I just... It's it's a real person, though. Sometimes I draw real people. Sometimes I draw cartoons. I, I do favor cartoons more than anything else. Golden Axe. Woohoo! My friend Rosie. Golden Axe. Another YouTube channel, Teddy Rubskin. That is Ray Black. You guys know our, our girl Ray and Noah and, and Nolan. That's uh, that's what that's what Ray looks like. That's that's her in real life. So I drew a picture of her. I was working on Roger Rabbit, but I never finished it. <laughs> so sometimes I draw drawings and I don't finish them. Oh, look at I did the battleground Tila. <laughs> Pretty cool. Some Pokemon. Uh, we did Evil Lynn. I had all kinds of stuff. There's Tila. Woohoo! Oh, was that Bumblebee? You can see some of this stuff. Like, I do speed arts on my channel. If you guys watch my YouTube shorts, go back to my history of YouTube shorts. You'll see me do a lot of speed art like this. This is actually one of the ones that I've done. And I did a cool uh, comic strip that I never got around to coloring, but I did the artwork for it. It's like a Streets of Rage 
type of thing. Zelda. <laughs> Supergirl. As you can tell, I like to draw the females. <laughs> This was my character on um, Red Dead Redemption 2. If you ever played online, that's what my character looked like. And this was a guy that I used to hang around with, a buddy of mine. So I drew our characters. And this is Moto Joneser's logo design. Well, part of it. And there's another one of Ray, but instead I did her in a cartoon form. Instead of a real life form. So I did both. It, oh yeah, April O'Neil. <laughs> that part in the cartoon where she's in the van. Travis Pastrana, if you guys uh, know who that is. He's a race car driver. Some other chick I started working on that I never finished. Oh, there's the concept one I did of the Baroness. Just doing a lo I, did, I did finish this one. It was a logo design for Baroness. Yeah, that's just some artwork. Lots of stuff that I've done. This binder is full of it. I gotta get a better binder. Because it's all just kind of loose in here. There's a cool pair of baby feet and a pair of hands. I drew it random. <laughs> so I'm like one of those artists that does all types of different styles. Uh, you name it, I've probably tried it. I've done everything from airbrush painting to you name it. Yeah, Roger Rabbit. <laughs> You'll have to draw Jeff Wonder Woman. Linda Carter Wonder Woman. Iono. Yes, that is Iono, uh, Jesse. Good eye. That was Iono. Yeah, that's exactly who I drew. <laughs> yeah, I like that character. She's cool from Pokemon. Uh, I bet you will make me an awesome Hordak. I'm sure I will. I can certainly do that. Akbim back. I'm back. Okay, I'm back. That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Good to see you. You want to take art classes? That's cool. Yeah, it, the fortunate thing about artwork is it can be taught. Uh, I have a method, because I've actually taught art before. It's it's not hard to do. Uh, one, of the, one of the methods that I use is the basic shape method. If you guys ever heard of it, it's a very common uh, practice. For a um, uh, beginner to uh, intermediate, uh, you start off with drawing like a circle, then you start filling it in, and then until you make a face. So you have like three phases. Uh, when you th uh, when it comes to artwork, I give you guys tips. People that want to learn how to draw, uh, all artwork is is uh, a bunch of circles and squares. That's all artwork is. And you just form it. And that's how it works. So um, where accountants see numbers, artists like me see circles and squares. So when I look at things in the real world, uh, like anything, for example, this hat, to me, I see a bunch of circles. You know what I mean? I see circles. And I see a rectangle. You know what I mean? So... That's how, uh, that's kind of what an artist does. You know, just, you just got to think circles and squares instead of twos and threes. That's the best tip that I can possibly give you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been drawing quite a bit lately, but I kind of like, I've been slacking off for the past month or so. Though I did do Tasty Cakes. I think I did his like what three weeks ago maybe a month ago something like that not that long ago so I am due to draw another one uh, 
Uh, let's see. Black Phoenix has some good stuff. He he already has the the drawing talent. Yep, yeah, that's good. Yeah, circle squares and cylinders. That's exactly what it is. Now I'm I'm one of those. Uh, I don't know about you, Black Phoenix, but I, I'm self-taught. I didn't take art classes. I, I'm self-taught. I picked up a pencil uh, when I was nine years old, and I never looked back. And all those methods that they teach in school, I learned those on my own. Like, I taught myself how to do that stuff, because, like, I just, I don't know, it comes natural to me. But I wasn't very good when I was nine years old. It took me from age nine to age 15 to get pretty decent at it. Uh, but I always stuck with it. Yeah, I'm self-taught, so we're, we're a rare breed. We're, we're self-taught, because uh, nowadays everything's digital, right? I don't know if there's people out there that still draw the old-fashioned way. I, I do it both. I can do digital, and I do physically on paper. I like to do it physically on paper first, the old-school way. <laughs> like how I look at the world. <laughs> See, I've, I was drawn since I was about the same age like you. I never took an art class. I can draw stick figures. Kind of. Well, I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, everyone has their talents. That's just one of mine. Uh, everyone has their talents. Now, there's things that I cannot do. Like, uh, like woodworking, for example. I am absolutely horrible at stuff like that. Um, I'm just not very good at that type of stuff. So, I have my talents, too. And I wish I could write. I really wish I could write. That was one of the, that's one of the talents I wish I had. But, not very good at writing. But I can draw like a mofo. Keep staring at some of these toys that I need to open up. Yeah, everyone has their gifts. Some people have the gift of uh, of entertaining. Like, uh, like I, uh, the good example of that is uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. When he comes on screen, he has that gift to draw you in. Like, that's how good he is. Uh, whether you like him as a wrestler or not, he's very good uh, at. Uh, he was very good at his promo stuff. He was good at drawing you in. He was. He was probably one of the best people at it. I've paused on acting and writing, but I really want to get back into singing. Oh, that's cool. Singing is definitely definitely something that I can't do. I wish I could, like, I wish I could do voice work, things like that. Like, I wish I could throw voices. That would be really cool. It's one of the things that I can't do. That I would have loved to have gotten into. I have the gift of gab. Yep, some people have that, too. <laughs> the gift of gab. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different talents out there, guys. It's it's pretty neat, the stuff that people can do. Oh, and there goes my light. My light just uh, yeah, it must be on zero percent. Oops, I must have to charge it. Yeah, it's uh, if you put it on full blast. You can, it's a great light. I love these lights. They're fantastic. I bought a two pack of these lights and they're wonderful. They even have like the, the LED panel and you can dim it. You can change the color to it and you can mount it right to your, uh, to your tripod or whatever you want to put it on. They're great lights. I'm going to put that on charge. Just give me a sec there, guys.
I've been eyeballing this because I've been wanting this action figure. I can't wait to... It's loose in the box, but... Uh, we're going to do an episode on her. Pretty cool figure. Sightlock from X-Men. Keep eyeballing it. <laughs> yeah, Eldor's uh, pretty good at it, too. Eldor's pretty... You're pretty good at sketching, too. I can floss my nasal cavity with spaghetti. Well, that's something. <laughs> something, I guess. Alright, well, I guess that's a wrap for tonight, guys. I think we'll call it a night. I'm ready to, uh... I'm ready to uh, hit the hay here, or not hit the hay, but I've uh, been playing Mortal Kombat, and the new season has started, and I want to get through it, and I want to play some more of this WWE stuff before the uh, Sunday hits, so I'm probably going to play some more of this too. I'm actually enjoying it. And I am ready to head on out for the night and get some food, get some snacks going. Only woman that will say this if I if I all I have to do is compete with this action figures I'm a lucky woman. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna call me first. Yeah, of course I'm gonna call you. I I don't say that because uh, that's just a guaranteed anyway. Hit the hay. <laughs> oh, you guys don't say that up in Toronto. Hit the hay. I actually woke up from a nap, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. I swear I'm still waking up. Yeah, uh, have a good uh, have a good one, guys. If you're around tomorrow, you know, I'm going to do some game streaming tomorrow, so. Come hang out. We'll talk away. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys on Friday night. Apparently only in New Brunswick. Oh, hit the hay is a New Brunswick saying, is it? Yeah, have a good night, Jeff. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, take care, guys. And uh, until next time. Time to go.